Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel. And today I have a fantastic bi-monthly travel subscription out of Canada called Trouvai. It's been sent to me for review and I am so excited because this one is featuring a country that I finally got to visit earlier this year, which is Egypt. I actually had a trip planned in 2020. It was of course canceled and then rescheduled for this year and I actually got to celebrate my fifth anniversary in in front of the pyramids with my husband so hopefully this brings back some great memories this box is just so fantastic Tina the curator does a really wonderful job every single time of really telling us about the destination and including some authentic snacks and treats as well as items that aren't gonna feel like souvenirs or tchotchkes that you're just gonna kind of tuck away in a drawer somewhere they're usually really beautiful great representations of things that you would find for yourself on a trip to that destination, but that you're gonna be able to have out and possibly use on a daily basis. Now this box is $54.99 if you just go box to box, that's Canadian, which is still under $40, and that does include the shipping even to the States. If you're able to do a longer subscription, so if you do three boxes or essentially six months, then it brings it down by a few dollars. Same thing if you do the whole year, which is six boxes, of course. I will put all of the details for you in the description box below, but let's go ahead and dive into this box. Now, if you are new to my channel, I unbox all kinds of subscription boxes, mostly lifestyle subscriptions, often with beach, travel, or Hugo themes. I also do books, beauty, jewelry, home decor, and the very occasional dash of Disney. So if you enjoy unboxings, particularly subscription boxes, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell, and that way you'll find out whenever I post new videos, which is usually at least once a day, if not twice, whenever I announce giveaways, and there's always a secret password giveaway away going on and of course whenever I go live as always if you are already subscribed thank you so much for being here and welcome back now if you do decide to subscribe I don't have a code for you currently I do have a link which should let her know where you found the box but even if you just put that in the notes or if there's a way in the checkout process to let her know this is where you saw the box that would be very very helpful to me I know a lot of times she has really great deals going on so I absolutely think you should use Use those deals but it's also really nice for box owners to know how you are finding their box so that I can continue to con share them with you here on the channel so hopefully I get to share the next one with you as well because it is the city of Busan which is South Korea which is of course where I was born I don't have a strong connection to South Korea because I am adopted so I left Korea when I was just four months old but th for that very reason it is a box that I am so so interested in so I would love to get to review that one as well all right you guys so inside we have the postcard so there's always a postcard from the destination and this one so we did a whole we did a whole country this time instead of a particular city because really all of the sites that you want to see in Egypt are spread out and if you have the opportunity to visit Egypt I do highly suggest spending a few days on a boat on the Nile that was like one of my favorite uh, portions of our trip there and of course here are the camels in front of the pyramids and yes I did do a camel ride and yes those camels look a little bit uh, downtrodden but I think they're okay and it was definitely an experience that I had to check off of my bucket list so on the back it actually says hi Noelle hope this box brings back happy memories of your time in Egypt so she even remembers that I got to go they have a very active Facebook group which I think is really great and also a great place to find out uh, information about any upcoming trips that you might have because there are a lot of avid travelers in that group who can give you lots of advice. So it says, from its soaring pyramids to its cosmopolitan cities, Egypt has long been a place of eternal mystery, fascinating visitors for centuries. We've explored its cuisine and handicrafts for this box, sure to thrill all your senses. Alan Wasalan, which, uh, and then it says to share your unboxing. So I know there's a lot of people that are out there doing it. It is a great box to share and again it's usually like half snacks and food which you know that's a great thing so all right so inside just a little Tukufai sticker and then I will go ahead and get the pamphlet out which will tell us all kinds of information all right you guys we got a lot of 
We got a lot of pink going on. I think that might be like a little belly dancing scarf going on, which honestly, I did not see belly dancing. I think belly dancing may have originated somewhere else. Uh, so this is edition number 11. I cannot believe that it's almost been two years since they got started. So it just says pretty much the same thing. The fascinations of Egypt extend across centuries and continents from the northern deserts of Africa to the southwestern tip of Asia across the Sinai Peninsula with a historical record stretching back to the sixth century BC. It's also one of the oldest countries on on the planet, but Egypt's eye-popping monuments, including the Sphinx and pyramids, coexist alongside the cosmopolitan capitals of Cairo and Alexandria, true treasures for any traveler. So it's really great because we did go with a guide, and so he has to explain, you know, you have to like learn your directions because it's all in relation to the Nile, which I believe is on 11 countries. So Upper Egypt, Lower Egypt, it all has to do with the Nile, not like North, South, West, East, like we know. So then she always has a page, um, there is some QR information, but then she always has a page that says like, don't miss things to see. So let's see if I saw some of them. Sharm El Sheikh, a dreamscape beach resort. I did not go to the beach in Egypt, but I did do a cruise, which was lovely, like I said. Uh, the Gezira Center for Modern Art and the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings, you guys, is amazing and you could spend days there. There are so many tombs to explore and I mean, I felt like I was walking on a movie set because things are so well preserved. Like the color and the gold on the walls in those tombs, it, it is amazing. Like you, it feels like it's been made for a movie set and they're like, nope, that's the original paint. That's the original color. That's, that's all real. It is, it's stunning, you guys. So a UNESCO World Heritage Site matched by few others, the Valley of the Kings houses over 60 tombs, including the must-see final resting place of Tutankhamun, a genuine bucket lister. Yes, you can see his little his little toes and everything, and it's very weird because they have guards basically in all of the tombs who will take your picture, which it just seems a little strange to take your picture next to, to Tutankhamun, but you know, you can do it if you want to. I admit I have a few pictures, but I probably won't put those into my photo album necessarily, but even the ceilings, you guys, are so incredible. All right, so it says, let's get started. And of course, she does have all of the information in French as well, because again, this is a Canadian box. So I'm looking at this stuff, you guys, and I'm very, very excited. Ooh, so there's a special live online class, an intro to Egyptian belly dancing. That is so cool. So it's actually going to be held um, while I'm away, so I won't get, be able to do that, but that would be really fun. So that's what's on the back. Often on the back page, there's like movies that are featuring Egypt, like Death on the Nile or The Mummy, which I will admit, I watched those as bookends to my trip, and it was really fun to kind of see all of those sites again. So, all right, let me go ahead and put this in front of me. So let's go ahead and <laughs> the elephant in the room here is this belly dancing scarf or skirt. So let me go ahead and check this out. So this would probably be something with some variations. Now, if I was going to get my own belly dancing skirt, I'd probably go for like a nice navy or black, you know, versus hot pink. But gotta shake those hips to get those shimmies going. So it's a belly dance hip scarf. Few accessories say Egypt quite like a traditional belly dance hip scarf used both to educate and enhance movement of the hips. These brightly toned accoutrement can also be worn to add a splash of unique flair to any outfit. So maybe I'll have to be a belly dancer for Halloween, except then I would have to show my belly. Belly dancing, you guys, is challenging. If you've seen like the real belly dancers where like they do all kinds of stuff with like swords on their belly, they have amazing control of their belly it's pretty impressive so this is this is as someone who grew up dancing hula I appreciate someone who has control of their hips so it's nice and short though you can see you can just put it over any other skirt or um, I don't know you're not gonna use it as a headscarf but that is very fun I'm gonna put that off to the side so it doesn't uh, make more noise all right and then I did pull a couple of pieces that I brought back from my trip to share with you as well if we have time. Um, one of them, of course, is my little scarab ring made out of lapis that I had custom made for me. I saw a few different variations in a jewelry shop and I asked them to have this made for me and they did it like overnight, which I thought it was fun and I call him my little blue buggy. Um, of course, the scarab is an important symbol in uh, Egypt because of they thought it was like the sun that he was moving. All right, let's see, what is this? Something is stuck to my bookmark. Let me, 
All right, so we have a papyrus bookmark with King Tut. I did go to a papyrus shop and we did actually buy some, they show you the difference between real papyrus and banana leaf, which is used a lot in the tourist shops. So you can tell the difference, um, usually like by holding it up to the light. I will say that a lot of the paintings that they had on the real papyrus were like so colorful or with like glow in the dark paint or with gold that they just seemed a little bit kitschy. But we got a really simple one that just had like some reeds and it was like the lotus uh which is of course like symbolizes i forget which one symbolizes upper egypt and which one symbolizes um <laughs> lower and upper egypt so but the lotus and the papyrus are the two symbols of those two parts of egypt so Invented by the Egyptians in approximately 3000 BCE, papyrus is made from the water plant of the same name, which was harvested from the marshy deltas of the River Nile. Mark your place in your latest read with this piece of ingenious antiquity. So again, and this has the uh, some of the hieroglyphic alphabet, which is kind of fun. So mine actually has, oh, <laughs> you're supposed to keep it inside of that plastic sheath so that you uh, have that tassel, but I kind of like it without, so I don't mind. Uh, so let's see. You can kind of see how they like pasted it together. Do you see the strips? So I'm curious if this is real papyrus or not. Um, so, but for example, the N is like this water, like which is kind of like the Nile, but I actually had a cartouche made um, that has my name written with the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And then of course, on the other side, I actually had my husband's name imprinted, which I thought was fun. So that is definitely a souvenir that I knew that I was going to want to get when I went to Egypt and you can get them in gold or in silver at varying prices for sure, but I knew that was something that I had to get, so I did get that. All right, let's see what else we've got. So this was stuck to it. So we got some Nescafe Arabic coffee, an instant mix with cardamom. It says, known as Awe in Egypt, coffee is an important symbol of hospitality and generosity. Spiced with cardamom, this traditional national favorite is served unsweetened, consumed instead with the accompanying sweet treats and dates. We'd suggest trying it with this box's treats for a genuine Egyptian cafe experience. So so one of the things that I like to do in any country or any city even here domestically is I like to go on food tours. So we did go on a food tour. It was great. It was a private tour. We had someone who could drive us through the insane traffic of, of Cairo, which is crazy. He took us down back streets. I thought we were going to be in a car accident. At one point he took us to a cafe. They definitely have a coffee culture. He set up a table for us like on a median so there was traffic going in either direction but we had some very strong kind of like Turkish coffee and it was a great experience. I also got to experience koshari which is like it's kind of like Egyptian bibimbap which is like it's got um garbanzo beans and like noodles and fried onions and hot sauce it's like a mishmash and rice it's like a mishmash of carbs and it is so delicious it was so great anyway that was like my favorite food that i had when i was in egypt is koshari so looks like we have some dates. Mm, so this will be delicious for your little coffee adventure. So it says Egyptians have been devouring ma'mul cookies all the way back to the pharaonic era. So in love with their sweet date filling, they even adorn temple carvings and paintings with their likeness. Once you try them, you'll know why they've stayed in flavor so long for so long too. So that looks good. It's like a cookie with basically date filling and we got four of them. So we got a lot in this box, which is very generous love that this is exciting to me because I looked at these in multiple shops and just couldn't decide so the fact that uh, Tina sent us one of these makes me so happy and I didn't have to make the choice so it is a mother of pearl inlay little box it says handcrafted by Egyptian artists using the same age-old techniques for over 1,000 years these mother of pearl boxes lined with velvet are mini chests perfect to house your heirlooms their complex patterns take days to complete each a unique treasure in their own right and this is actually a pretty good size so a nice little trinket box for you to have. I used to collect boxes and little dishes and then my dresser just got way too full. But this is really, really pretty. Hopefully you guys can see like the sheen, the shimmer of that mother of pearl inlay and like the handicraft, the like workmanship that went into this and goes all the way around the box. So this is very exciting to me and I will probably like keep some of my Egyptian treasures in there like my cartouche and my, and my little scarab ring. So that's perfect. Speaking of which, it looks like we 
got a little scarab, which is adorable. So it's a scarab bead. It says ancient Egyptians believed Kepri, a scarab headed figure, renewed the sun each and every day. Since then, scarabs are found throughout Egyptian hieroglyphics and sanctuary. So it's like a little stone carving. And it says, uh, hieroglyphics and statuary a symbol of rebirth and resurrection they're often found on necklaces and bracelets perfect settings for this box is handmade scarab bead string it along the cord or chain of your choice so let's see so i think that yeah so the hole just goes through his head so you could basically put a knot at the bottom so that it sits upright super duper cute and it, like they do a lot of stone work they're known for alabaster actually there's a lot of like um cheaper versions of it so but this is basically like probably a little like sta sandstone or something while I'm at it I'll show you I also got a couple little scarabs these were like little gifts from our guide in Egypt my husband got one and I got one so we have little buggies um, and I'll probably just put our little, little bead next to it so there's like a whole little scarab family now which is adorable all right so it looks like I did find another coffee so you can Everybody gets their own coffee and two of the uh, Mahmul uh, Medjool date snacks. This is like kind of the big guy in here. So this is Basbusa with nuts. Ooh, this looks like a very sweet, sweet treat. So let me see. It's a dessert mix. And they did include like this whole page is telling us the ingredients as well as the instructions. So it says, you can see a nice big picture of it here. It says this baked semolina dessert soaked in syrup is so beloved by Egyptians that Basbusa is also a popular pet name, meaning simply my sweet. And please follow our instructions below as those on the box are slightly lost in translation. I love that she thought about that. I have definitely tried to do conversions and figure out directions when I got items from other countries and it just didn't work. Um, we got to try so many fantastic foods. You can get buy spices in bulk there for a great price because there's like so many different spice markets. So that is definitely something to consider if you're a chef and you happen to get to go to Egypt. I didn't have any basbusa, but I love that she included the ingredients. It's just like yogurt, butter, sugar, water, vanilla, and margarine. So, you know, it's going to be a sweet and delicious treat for sure. Um, yeah, that's kind of fun. Some some baking involved. It seems like a pretty easy and straightforward mix as well. Uh, I did listen to some Egyptian music, like pop music, and like my favorite, like sweet nothing was uh, Biscotaya, Biscotaya Armisha, which uh, I asked someone what that uh, like basically translates to, and they're like, "You're my little crispy biscuit." So. <laughs> <laughs> that's just something uh, it's an endear a term of love you call someone your biscotaya armisha your crispy biscuit so uh, <laughs> and i think we have one final item in here which makes me very happy and don't forget that belly dancing class that everybody's it's going to be a lo loud zoom zoom call um so maybe maybe it's not going to be with everybody's volume on oh my goodness i cannot believe this made it in one piece so this is also something that i did pick up my own it's a blown glass perfume bottle. So they are known for their perfumes. You can go into different ones. They can make you pretty much any perfume that you love here in the States or throughout the world. They know what the ingredients are and they can create it. They do a lot of aromatherapy, which I think is awesome. So this is of course the stopper and then you can put that right in there. This is really pretty. So it's just kind of like some lamp work. It does have some gold on it. They, like you, you can get these almost anywhere but it's really fun they do some very intricate beautiful ones as well it says hand etched and hand painted and kiln fired by egyptian glass blowing artisans these bottles made of pure pyrex glass are one of a kind masterpieces created using the same methods developed in the early 19th century egyptian glass is equally suited for holding scented oils or as a purely decorative touch so i'm very excited about this i'll show you the other perfume bottle that i got i got like they had ornaments they had camels horses they had big big elaborate ones. I got this one because it was shaped like a camel, which is a little kitschy, but I couldn't help myself. I just was like, well, I'm in Egypt and I rode a camel, so I have to get the little Egyptian camel. And then I did, we were in one of the uh, perfumeries, so I did get some perfume. And again, the perfume there is a really great deal. So if you go knowing that you're going to want to purchase some, of course, you have to bring it back in your check luggage. You can't do carry on. It came in this nice box, of course and i went for one so they just uh, sell it to you very simply it's uh this was the elite perfumery and i got the secret of the desert which was like a mix of scents but i haven't smelled it in a while i should smell it um so that's what's going to go into my little perfume bottles which i'm excited about Ooh, let me see i think i hadn't opened this bottle yet 
oh that smells really good you guys so there were some that were a little like more musky and of course I chose one that was a little bit fresher um, but that was definitely part of the experience for me and this box absolutely brought back that fantastic experience for me it just like added to my collection like kind of filled in some gaps that I had where like for example this beautiful mother of pearl inlay box I had wanted one of these and now I have one I have another like my perfume bottles actually match and of course I have my Egyptian perfume to put in them I have a little addition to my scarab family I'm very excited about uh, trying this delicious dessert which looks awesome and having a little uh, coffee date with my hubs so you guys let me know what you thought about this fantastic box if you had the opportunity to travel to Egypt let me know about your experience it is a magical place it is much safer than I think a lot of people think and I highly encourage you to go and experience it and experience it through this box she probably doesn't have any more of this one left but you can definitely check it out and see if she does maybe there's like a couple of them left that you can sneak in on and then of course course definitely get signed up for the South Korea Busan box I know I will be looking for that box uh, as well I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up it would help me out so much and I'll see you soon in my next unboxing